In 1989, when China's youth demanded democracy, Beijing sent tanks to the Tiananmen Square. It's 2020. The Chinese cannot send tanks to Hong Kong. So Xi Jinping has quelled the pro-democracy movement by slapping Hong Kong with a punishing law. China is calling it the Hong Kong National Security Law. One supposedly aimed at protecting the city's sovereignty and national interest. Nothing could be further from the truth. This new law will choke Hong Kong. It hammers the very principle of one country, two systems. It undermines Hong Kong's autonomy and is China's weapon to stop protests in this city. Because this is all that China cares about. What does this new security law say? That's a question that no one will be able to answer right now. Do you know why? Because Beijing has never made its draft public. They've imposed a law and not told people what it's all about. Hong Kongers do not know what has hit them. But some things have been made amply clear. This new law bans secession. It bans subversion of state power. It bans terrorism, foreign intervention, and allows mainland China state security agencies to operate in Hong Kong. Just look at the last point. The moment you allow a foreign security agency to operate on your land, where does the principle of one country, two systems go? Out of the window. This security law was passed unanimously by China's rubber stamp parliament today. And there's something else that you should know. The law was passed at record speed. In less than two weeks since it was tabled and six weeks since it was unveiled. Do you know why? Because China has been rattled by the pro-democracy movement. Tomorrow is the 1st of July, the 23rd anniversary of Hong Kong's handover to China. Pro-democracy activists had planned large demonstrations. China did not want visuals of dissent beaming on screens worldwide. So what did it do? It passed a law one day before the planned protests. And the results are already showing. The fear of spending a lifetime in jail or being extradited to mainland China has silenced some of the most vocal voices, some of the most prominent voices. Pro-democracy leader Joshua Wong quit his party this morning. His group, Demosisto, seized its operation. Now let's come to the legality of this punishing law. Can Beijing quash the principle of one country, two systems so easily? Isn't this a violation of the Sino-British Joint Agreement? Beijing apparently has found some loophole. But that does not mean it will go unscathed. China is already facing strong international criticism. We have indeed consistently said that China would risk very negative consequences if, if it went ahead with this law, including for business confidence, China's reputation, public perception in Hong Kong and internationally. This enactment of national security law undermines credibility from the international community in the principle of one country, two systems. We are obviously deeply concerned about the decision to pass the, uh, the national security law in, uh, in Beijing as it affects uh, Hong Kong. Uh, we will be looking at the uh, law very carefully. China once promised Hong Kong that they wouldn't change its system for 50 years. This proves that one country, two systems doesn't work. With these words translate into action, what consequences can China possibly face for taking away Hong Kong's autonomy? For starters, alienation. The United Nations has already called the situation in Hong Kong quote-unquote urgent. The U.S. Senate has passed a legislation. It imposes sanctions on those who support this Chinese law. Individuals and entities both, they face sanctions. The law will also cost a lot of money. Hong Kong would lose its stature in the region, probably lose business to Singapore or Shanghai. Will businesses continue to invest in Hong Kong after the city loses its autonomy? Experts say many companies are expected to pull out. As for Hong Kong, the law spells the end of its mini constitution, the end of free speech, the end of protests, and the end of autonomy. Thank you.